Not just to your husbands and wives, but period. It does everybody good. I told our leadership class this the other, the other day, and I'm going to tell you now. It does everybody that's trying to please God good to ever now and again do something for somebody else that you don't want to do. That's not against the rules. I tell my kids that. I, I think about Garrison. I say, I want you to go wash your dishes. And he'll say, well, I don't want to. I said, that's fine. I ain't got no problem with that. I don't want to do them either. I ain't never woke up in the morning and said, oh, thank you, Lord, for that pile of dishes for me to do. But we go do them anyway. But you need to find, if you have trouble submitting, the way you bring yourself under subjection is you purposely do something you don't want to do. And then as you begin to grow, you learn to do it with your mouth shut. And then as you keep on going longer, you learn to do it and folks think you like doing it. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God because of the respect we have toward the Lord. I'm not going to be a lot longer. Because I'm, uh, I'm thankful, Sister Betty. She didn't know that she saved a brother. By, by The Kersade shop wanted their corner pieces back. That's why we don't have them no more. So she made me a block up here. Because the Bible says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. <laughs> you can't stop there, though. It says, as unto the Lord. One of the reasons why some of you ain't got the victory in your home life yet is you haven't learned to submit unto your husband as unto the Lord. I can, I'm not going to go to it. I'm not going to do it. But I can go into the Bible and prove to you that one of the greatest methods of witness and evangelism for a woman that has an unsaved husband is to be a good wife to him. Oh, I think I'm on a middle bus there a while. One of the ways to bring revival into your home is be a good wife and be a good husband. God ain't going to change them without changing you. And the reason why they ain't changed yet is because you ain't changed yet. Submit. You have to. It's the God's plan. Say, well, I don't like it. Tough. Tough. For the husband's the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, fellas, and you've heard me teach this before, you knew I wasn't going to stay there. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. Begins with a reflection of spiritual authority. It's the Lord, it's the husband, and it's the wife. The husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Greatest love that was ever known. And as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be subject to their husbands. But husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. And how much did he love the church? He gave himself in place of it. He stepped in and said, don't do it to my wife, do it to me. Because the church is the bride of Christ. Do not, do not, as a Holy Ghost filled Christian person, buy into that mumbo jumbo that you hear over the news. about the role of men and women. I heard Sister Mangan say this. I have said it every year since I've heard her say it. Sister Mangan is a preacher, and she is a preaching machine. But I've got a picture on my, on my iPad that I saved that somebody snuck into their sanctuary that will seat 3,500, 3,000 maybe people. 
And right down here in the front, in front of the pulpit, in a completely abandoned sanctuary, was Sister Dignified Vesta Mangan, dressed to the nines, laying flat, praying before the Lord. And she said, I have never seen a wife have trouble submitting when her husband loves her as Christ loves the church. So, fellas, before you... Well, you got to do what I say. First off, you're ignorant. That's not what the Bible's saying. She ain't your slave. She ain't your servant. Get your own glass of tea once in a while. Lay out your own clothes. Okay? She ain't, and, and when she's sick, take care of everything. Let me tell you something. I'm going to brag on myself. When my wife is sick, she don't have to do nothing. Ain't that right, baby? Brother Pete, I take care of it all. Oh, y'all know all my story. I wasn't born that way. But somebody called my daddy had to speak some sense into my life. And realized that she was the best thing that had ever happened to me. And if I wanted to keep her, I better learn to treat her right. <laughs> Fellas, we start loving them like they deserve to be loved. They'll become the wife that they're supposed to be. I ain't going on. Till some more fellers beside Brother David says Amen. These women been clapping and stuff, but I'm telling you, I'm in the Word. I'm in the Word. I'm not a bit ashamed to tell you that whatever my wife wants or needs, I do everything I can to see that it happens. Everything. I've even had a couple fellas, I'm not going to say no names, but one of them's a brother-in-law to me. That said, you're going to have to slow down on some of that stuff. You're making things bad for the rest of us. And it wasn't the one in the sound booth. You know where I found that out, Brother Terry? I found it in the book. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. I know we're having fun and we're having a good time, but we're going to have revival and we're going to have a strong church. And a strong church begins with a strong family. I feel the Holy Ghost right now very, very strongly. I'm not perfect. I promise. I'm not, don't you think for one second. I'm, I'm, but I am telling you that if you will listen to the leading of the Holy Ghost, he'll make you better than what you used to be. And tomorrow you won't be the same as you are today. It's all about the Holy Ghost. Am I going to let the Spirit lead me, or am I going to let my own ignorant carcass lead me? Lay up on the couch, your belly flopping, like you married, her, married somebody supposed to wait on you hand and foot. That junk makes me sick. I'm terribly uncomfortable in that. Terribly uncomfortable when I see that kind of stuff happening. Terribly uncomfortable. Now, I'm not telling you wives... Don't do things for fellas. But I'm telling you, fellas, if we treat them right, they'll do a lot more. I feel pretty good right now. I didn't even have time to think up all this stuff before I got here. You know what, Brother David? I left Malden. Brother Ray, he testified to it. 552. And I was picking Jimmy Dale up at 645. I drove home from Malden. I took a shower. I shaved. I got dressed. And I went and picked him up. And I was still early for church. That's an example I want to be. But I also want to be an example of what a man ought to be. A husband and a father. I haven't arrived yet. I don't have it all figured out yet. Sometimes them presents are because I need a little help. It 
It goes a long ways, fellas. First Peter chapter three, verse number seven. Can I move on? I'm not really moving far, but can I move on? Are we, are we, are we grasping a hold of this? The Bible says whoever, and I heard somebody one time try to say that this was ugly scripture. It ain't an ugly scripture. Be proud of it. Whoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing. That's in the book. And we like to say, wives, submit yourself to your husbands, and that's true. But we need to step up and do our part first. Likewise, you husbands. I need to pass the plate again to the lady side. I, I got to tell you the truth. And, and you know that I was away from here for several years, so this is no reflection on Brother McKinney. But one of the things I could not wait to do was begin to teach Bible studies on this kind of thing that I'm teaching it on right now. I could not wait at all. Because I wanted to share the lesson I learned. So somebody else didn't have to go through the same mess that I had to go through learning to do it. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. That is, not means she's not as strong as you. That means she's more emotionally driven and we're more practical driven. And when they want to get in their feelings, let them. And hold them up. My wife, she texted me while I was at Malta and said, you want me to preach tonight? <laughs> She'll be preaching Sunday morning the opposite of this, baby. You hear me? As being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Honor them as a caretaker, nurturing, inspiring confidence. I remember, and I learned this from my daddy. When we first got married, Amanda couldn't cook all that many different things. Well, she could cook, she could cook good. But it wasn't but like a couple. Spaghetti. And, and then she could make sweet stuff. But I learned from my daddy that every meal she cooked. Fellas, try this. I learned from my daddy every meal she cooked. I tell her it's a good one. I thank her for it. And let me tell you what's funny is Tripper, just a little, because there for a long time it was just me, him, and Mama. And we was poor as Job's turkey. I feel so sorry for Tripp sometimes. The, the, we, we didn't have nothing when it was just the three of us. And I remember we had ravioli for supper that you take out of the can and warm up in the microwave. I still like it all right, by the way. You could put it in the oven and put cheese on it, get some light bread and sop that juice up, and it goes all right now, let me tell you. But I remember Mando warmed up some ravioli and I heard him in the Bible so proud, my old chest swelled up. He said, Mama, you make the best ravioli ever. <laughs> but you know where he learned it at? He learned it from Daddy. <laughs> Honor him. Accept the role of the leader. Don't expect her to fill that role. But at the same time, ladies, when we try to do good, say so. Because we're by nature prideful individuals. I feel, man, I feel the Holy Ghost again. This stuff is so real. We want to talk about hellfire and damnation so many times. We got to get right where we live. When we step out there and we put ourselves out there and we try to do something, it may not be exactly what you wanted, but say, good job, baby, I appreciate it. Don't say, well, while you're at it, go ahead and get that too. <laughs> there ain't nothing that'll let the air out of your sails quicker than for, a, for your wife or, a, or, or, or to say, you didn't do good enough. Y'all thought I was going to defend the women all night long, didn't you? 
I, you know what, you know something, Brother Pete? I, the last two statements, not one clap and not one amen. It is honorable to be the one that says the buck stops here. I remember one time, I don't know if Carol remembers this or not, and it wasn't nice of me. Okay, it was not nice of me. I'm not saying do this. Okay, but Amanda had a kidney stone, and they kept her in the hospital all night long. It was tough. It was bad. She was crying, and I ain't going to tell you about what I had to go down to the nurse desk and take care of for, but I did. And it come time, they were going to keep her all night long. And it's me and her mama and her standing there in the room. And Sister Carol said, baby, do you need me to stay? And before Amanda could say anything, I said, not really, we don't. <laughs> now, that, that wasn't the right thing to say. But what I was saying, Brother David, I'll take care of her. They had to kick me out of the hospital more than one time. I tried to sleep in the same room with her when, it, when we was too poor to have a, a room by yourself. They frown on that. But God, step up. Step up and be there when they need us. Yes, sir. That, it means exactly that, Brother David. And that's... It means if you're struggling in your relationship with God, one of the best ways to try to fix it is your relationship with your husband. That's exactly what that's saying. You say, well, I'm struggling with this and I'm struggling with that. It may be that you ain't getting nowhere praying because you got junk all messed up at the house. Brother David, that's exactly what that says. Your relationship with God is reflected, is affected by your relationship with your spouse. Get it right. Spiritually, complementary roles. Galatians 3 and 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. This regards with the way that God deals with people. It is not eliminating genders. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Somebody say all flesh. All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens. I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. There is a defined role for men and women in the church and in ministry. Now there is some room for debate where leadership is concerned, but there is no room for debating the fact that both men and women are anointed for the ministry. I'm about to close. I know y'all been here a while. I'm being facetious. I, say, what in the world has this got to do with holiness? This has got to do with defining the roles of the man and of a woman, of a husband and of a wife. And all men are not husbands, and all women are not wives. That is clear. Western society has blurred the distinctions between men and women. And that's the society that we live in. The Western world has blurred them, the distinctions between men and women. And the purpose is to erase those distinctions. And this is a gross, a gross manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. Because there's no greater slap in the face of God than to attempt to obliterate the boundaries that he created. The roles have been abused and distorted. 
unhealthy dominance by males and unhealthy acquiescence by females or vice versa. It has been distorted by sexuality. Now, homosexuality, bisexuality, bestiality, etc. are endorsed by society as a choice when they are declared by God to be a sin. I told you all of the country, I believe it was Austria, it might have been Sweden, it was in that same neck of the woods. That last year, either late last year, earlier the year before, that they brought legislation up to make pedophilia an alternative lifestyle. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Because if you can identify to be a man or woman, then you can be 12 and identify to be 25. Ain't that right, Brother Robbie? If we're going to destroy the very foundation of the separation of the sexes that God made, everything's fair game. How long before somebody sues because you've got to wait till you're 16 to get a driver's license and win? How long before somebody sues because you've got to be 21 to get alcohol and win, Brother Billy? Well, where does it stop? It doesn't stop. And that's why the church, God have mercy, man. Do y'all feel that in here? That's why the church has got to be a lighthouse, a stronghold of a commitment to the biblical principles that say we're not going that way. Even down to the most rudimentary things, which include the way we dress. It's much, much, much less about being different than it is about being true unto God. Then, of course, gender identity. And then there's dress. And then there's hair. And we will discuss them, too, in the next two weeks. Please stand with us.